Hello, my name is Daniel from the University of Leeds iGEM 2013 team. Today we're going to give you a brief overview of some of the standard terms and general principles in synthetic biology and help you get a basic understanding of what we do. We'll start with the translation and transcription. This is what is known as the central dogma of molecular biology and knowing this will help you understand the core principles of genetic engineering. All the information that encodes who you are your genes, is made up of a large molecule called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. This is formed of three parts. A long backbone of sugar molecules, called deoxyriboses, held together with phosphate molecules. This is wrapped in the familiar double helix shape. All the information is stored within this. There are four types of nucleic acids, known as bases, adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine. DNA is double-stranded, and each strand has all the information needed to produce an entire copy of you, which comes from the genetic code, or rather the order of the base pairs. The other strand will be an inverted copy, as adenine, A, can only bind to thiamine, T, and cytosine, C, can only bind to guanine, G. This is known as complementary base pairing. Note that this is different to complementary, which is when someone says something nice about you. Complementary is when two objects go well together. Say if your shoes complement your shirt, or your blue plastic gloves complement your lab coat. This means if one strand has A, T, C, T, A, G, the complementary strand must have T, A, G, A, T, C. Now, that's how the information is stored. However, reading it is a completely different matter. Your DNA is incredibly long. In each cell, you hold around three meters of DNA. All the DNA in your body stretched out end to end could easily reach the moon. For a gene to be expressed, first it must be transcribed. This is the process of turning DNA into an RNA copy and this is achieved by a special enzyme called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase copies the template strand of DNA and makes a special messenger RNA copy that is complementary to the original strand, but contains the same base sequence as the coding strand of DNA. The only difference between the coding strand of DNA and the messenger RNA strand is that instead of thiamine, RNA polymerase incorporates the base uracil. Once the strand has been transcribed, it can then be translated. Translation is done by the ribosome, which binds to the start codon, the three-letter code that signifies the start of the gene, and then binds to the messenger RNA strand and translates it into a polypeptide sequence. Amino acids are transported to the ribosome by transfer RNA molecules, and then the ribosome creates peptide bonds between the individual amino acids, in order to create the fully formed polypeptide chain. When the ribosome reaches the stop code on, the free letter code that signals the end of the gene, it releases the polypeptide chain into the cell, at which point it undergoes some further folding and processing to become a fully functional protein. Each coding gene has a promoter. Promoters are a region in the DNA that starts the transcription of a gene. For this reason, promoters are located closely to the gene they are related to. Little proteins called transcription factors bind to the promoter and recruit an RNA polymerase to the gene to produce a messenger RNA copy of the gene. Another term used in synthetic biology is a terminator. A terminator is a sequence that stops transcription. It tells the RNA polymerase to stop copying the gene and attach thus releasing the messenger RNA it was making. Restriction enzymes are frequently used in synthetic biology. These are a special type of enzyme that cut at specific base sequences on a gene. They leave sticky ends on the end of each fragment, and so two sticky ends that are complementary to each other can come together and be joined by another special enzyme called DNA ligase. Now we shall describe a couple of key techniques that are frequently used in the labs for synthetic biology. Firstly, there is PCR. 
PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, which is essentially a method to amplify DNA, a DNA photocopy, if you like. It uses an enzyme that is stable at really high temperatures called TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase is sourced from bacteria that live in hot springs and hydrothermal vents, hence its ability to withstand high temperatures. This enzyme copies the DNA of interest that is located the, between the two primers. Primers are short sequences of DNA that are complementary to the beginning and the end of the gene of interest. The reaction proceeds as a cycle. First, denaturation, then annealing of the primers, and then elongation. This is repeated numerous times with varying temperatures for the different steps. This results in an exponential increase of the gene of interest. Finally, transformation. Transformation is when bacterial cells take up a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid. This plasmid contains the genes that you place into the cell. This is usually done by a heat shock treatment, which is where the cells are transferred from a really cold environment to a really hot environment very quickly, and this disrupts the cell membrane and allows for the uptake of the new DNA. Later, to test if the cells have taken up the plasmid, they are grown on a cell medium containing an antibiotic. The cells containing the plasmid will have acquired the antibiotic resistance as it is encoded into the plasmid, so these are the only colonies that will grow. The cells that haven't taken up the plasmid will not have the antibiotic resistance, thus will not grow on the medium.